I don't have all the parts I need to build the Tacoma. I don't have all the parts I need to build the Gladiator. And now I don't have all the parts I need to build the engine of my TJ. So what do we build? I think we should build an off-road trailer. I've been getting asked to build one of these since I started this channel. And I want to start with a sweet, let's see if you can see it back there, articulating hitch setup. Today's episode is brought to you by Empire Abrasives. All the abrasive discs, cutting wheels, grinding wheels, everything you see that is an abrasive on my channel is from Empire. I found the Empire has the best combination of good price and great quality, and this is why I choose to work with Empire. If you're looking for high quality abrasive products, make sure you check out Empire Abrasives, and if you wanna save a little extra money, use coupon code DIRTLIFESTYLE at checkout. Now that I've got something welded together and letting it cool, let's talk about our game plan. So everything is modeled after just a normal, this is like as generic a hitch setup as you're ever gonna find. This is rated at 5,000 pounds, got a two inch ball, actually, oh, this is two and five sixteenths ball, but usually two inch ball goes in there, two by two, so this is, this is pretty common. And you'll even see people haul way more than 5,000 pounds on one of these, but we know we have a benchmark. If we size things, close to this we should be good for up to 5,000, and our trailer isn't going to be anything close to that i think if i overbuild the crap out of this trailer and we put a big tent on it and all of our gear and water and all that i, I don't see us getting any more than 1500 so if we use the sizing as people who aren't engineers if we mimic what engineers have done for 5,000, i think that we're going to be in the clear I'll start with our hardware size i all of our hardware is going to be one inch hardware which is way overkill a one inch grade eight bolt is extremely strong but let me get this nut off of here if you look at what the hardware size for this ball is it is one inch so i decided that all of our joints are going to be bolted together with one inch hardware because we've already seen that demonstrated and dot approved on something that you get it again we're not engineers we're trying to mimic what real engineers have done um, now this, what I want to do is I want to bolt this to a re uh, this, this hitch. And the reason why is because I want to be able to make it to where whenever we bolt this through, we can basically change the height based on a normal hitch, just like you would if we were hooking to a ball. So if we needed this to be, you know, upside down, we can mount it that way. If we needed one that just goes straight through, we can get a hitch that's just straight through. If we need one with a four inch drop, we can get a four, four inch drop. You see where I'm going to this. So we're gonna start with this. Uh, man, that's still so hot, I can feel it. With these two pieces here, I did a root pass and then I did a really hot cover pass. We're gonna add some gusseting and stuff, but at least we're gonna get some points on the board here. What I wanna do is I want to fit this over this inch and a half tube. So this is two inch DOM quarter wall, super heavy duty stuff. This is inch and a half DOM quarter wall. And so we're gonna slide that over this. We're gonna be able to measure and then cut what we need, and then we're gonna use, this is basically a spacer slash spindle that we're gonna bolt down on top of here. It's gonna make more sense as I do it. I just wanted to stop and give you guys a brief explanation as to how we're gonna do this. Step one is mocked up. 
Simple, right? So we have a one inch bolt going down through where that stud would have went on the, uh, on the hitch ball. Um, and then we basically are using a smaller piece of tube on the inside of this to act as a bearing. So we shaved that down because the outer diameter of this is an inch and a half. The inner diameter of that is also an inch and a half. So it made it extremely tight. We would have been able to press it in with a press, but then we wouldn't be able to get it to spin around. But because we were able to smooth out the outside and take a thou or two off, we we're able to actually fit these in there. And it's, it's still a snug fit, but it, it spins no problem. So the key to this is that I made this little spacer or bearing, I guess, a little bit taller than the outer sleeve material. And the reason I did that is because whenever we tighten this all the way down, I wanna make sure that this is spinning against the sleeve and it's not the whole thing spinning against the bolt. I prefer to have the bolt just be there for strength and not to be there as part of anything that rotates. Because if the bolt has stuff that's rotating on it, it's much more likely that we're gonna be able to loosen it up. So because the bolt stays stationary and the only things that spin are the contact between the this sleeve or, or this bearing i don't know what you'd call it this is i guess it's a bearing usually a bearing goes in between two things but either way it's some sort of a spindle i guess but because it spins between these two it makes it to where we can use the bolt just for strength and we don't have to worry about um it, it slowly loosening up over time because there's something spinning on the bolt hope that makes sense so we made it greasable uh, because this is something I'm gonna grease every time I go out to make sure that we have a very slow wear between all these parts. Um, and you know, there should be only very slow wear. This isn't something that just spins around super fast like a trailer axle bearing or anything like that. This is just gonna be doing this. <laughs> Nothing crazy, it should never get hot. It should never like, it, this should not wear out very quickly because of how heavy duty and thick everything is. Um, and because of the fact that it's just not a whole lot of movement on these parts. So anyway, the next part, because we have two axes knocked out right away. We need to make a yoke to go over this and I wanna make it a yoke that goes over this that connects into something that can spin 360 degrees this way and then that'll be our third axis. I have some ideas, but to be honest with you, what I need to do is I just need to start cutting and seeing what parts fit together and then we're gonna go from there. One of the funnest things about a project like this is that there's so many different ways you could do it. You can really let your creative juices flow as long as you have a really good mechanical knowledge and understanding of how all these parts need to work together. When designing things like this, I really keep in mind leverage. Leverage is everything and something can be really strong if it doesn't have a whole lot of leverage on it. And then whenever you oversize your components, it can be even stronger. And these are the kinds of ideas that I keep in mind whenever I'm designing something like this. thickness is also a very important consideration whenever you're designing something from scratch like this and this has an extremely important job this trailer coming off of the back of this vehicle is not going to be an option and because we're not engineers we can't really build it to the bare minimum because we don't have the means to calculate what the bare minimum is so I suggest overbuilding things a bit this is not the place to skimp. This has such an important job and literally could be a life or death decision when you decide to save a couple bucks and go a little bit thinner.
There it is. Re believe it or not, this is actually super simple. So I'll show you why I did this the way that I did it, but first I wanna show you that it moves in every direction. This thing does exactly what it's supposed to do. It articulates in three different axes, and this is gonna give us a lot of flexibility off-road. So let's, uh, let's start by saying this part goes to the truck or tow vehicle, and then this part is going to be the first part of our trailer. So you're looking at the very first piece that is gonna, we're gonna build the trailer off of. Now, this doesn't rotate on the bolt. I wanna be super clear about that. I've seen a whole bunch of setups on YouTube that I think are extremely unsafe, and it's because they make it to where their whole system just pivots on one bolt. And the reason you don't wanna do that is because when this has a whole bunch of weight on it, you've got tongue weight and everything else, and it starts spinning, it'd be real easy for over time, it loosen that bolt up. And if that bolt is all that holds your truck and trailer together, that's a huge problem. So this bolt just helps to encapsulate this collar, whereas the yoke that we built here just rides only on the spindle. So if you look, those two collars are not spinning at all because these collars are connected to the spindle, they're not connected to the yoke. So the reason we have a bolt at all is because once I press fit this uh, collar on and then I tightened it down, I wanted to make sure that we had a bolt that was gonna give it extra reinforcement because who knows, one day, I mean, I, I could see a situation where I have someone behind me who's stuck and I need to pull them out with the trailer. I wanna make sure this has a ton of clamping force and that one inch grade eight bolt is a ton of clamping force. So that bolt actually runs through and uh, there's a nut on the back side here. I, the reason it's so long is because there's I couldn't fit a nut inside. So we have a one foot long bolt with a nut back here and that just kinda, it, it pulls the whole thing together just by helping to encapsulate this collar. I hope all that makes sense. This yoke is way overkill, but that's what I wanted. I wanted something super overkill. So if we have a situation where this gets stuck on a rock and we have like a whole trailer hanging off behind it, I can just throw a winch line and I can drag this whole thing through a bunch of rocks and I'm not worried. And I'm telling you right now, as someone who's built a lot of stuff, having a double shear, three quarter inch, three quarter inch yoke is super strong. This is gonna be stronger than like anything on the truck, anything on the trailer. This is ultra strong. So this is pretty much done. You can see how my design is here. Uh, I wouldn't exactly call it budget. I will th I'll put together how much this cost and I'll put it in the description of the video. The only thing I have left to do, and I'm gonna do this at a later date, so I'm gonna add a couple gussets in here just to make sure that that's not just weld that's connecting these two. So I'm gonna add a couple of really heavy duty gussets, um, probably three of them, to make sure that this is gonna be a super strong component as well. So anyway, after that, all we have left to paint it. But before we get to any of that, and before you get to see it actually being used in person, we need to finish building our trailer, and this is the first piece of the trailer. So once I finish this video and I edit it, uh, I'm gonna start building the trailer out here. One final thought before we go, and that is that I don't encourage you to build anything that I build ever in here, especially something as important as a hitch. So I hope that these videos inspire you to go and build things like bumpers and sliders and whatever, but I would never recommend someone build one of these articulating hitches themselves. Um, it's just, it's honestly, it's not smart. I have a lot of experience building this stuff and it, what's amazing is that you can look into the laws here in this country, there's not a, it's pretty gray there's not a lot of laws saying that I can't build this, but that doesn't mean that I should. It doesn't mean that you should. So if you if you go look around, I, I, what I consider what I highly recommend you do is just consider buying one of these articulating hitch setups that already exist. It's like three, four, five hundred bucks. There's a bunch of different options out there. They're DOT approved. They've been engineered by people that actually know what they're doing, and it'll get your trailer down the road. And if it, if that trailer comes off and it was a DOT approved hitch that an engineer did. It's not your fault as long as you hooked everything up correctly. But if we build it here in the shop and that trailer comes off and it hurts somebody, there's a lot of responsibility um, on our shoulders. So I want you to consider all these things before you decide what projects to build. I saw a lot of videos on YouTube while I was researching doing this video that had hitches that were that had no business being on the road. They were so poorly designed. They're... <laughs> They're selling the video is like, this is the way to do it cheap, not this is the way to do it right. And that already is a red flag. So if it's like a $50 trailer articulating hitch setup, 
It's for a reason. And I guarantee if you talk to any articulating hitch manufacturer, they're gonna tell you the same thing. There is a lot of scary stuff that is going down the highway out here. Please, please, please consider the options before you decide to build something like this. Anyway, I don't want to uh, mother you anymore. And I, <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the video. I just think that there's a lot of consequences to what we do here in our shop. And I want you to consider that before you just copy what Nate does. Don't ever copy what Nate does. Just decide for yourself what, the, what level of responsibility you're willing to take and then go from there. So if you wanna help support the channel, you go to The Dirt Lifestyle. We have t-shirts, hats, neck gaiters. Um, we've got a link to our Patreon account on there as well. I do an extra video a week for the Patreon people. The last video I did for Patreon was our gladiator towing test. I uh, took my wife's gladiator. We did a whole bunch of, put a bunch of wood in a trailer and wood in the bed and we went and hauled it and I just kind of made a little video on my thoughts. So if you're into that kind of thing, make sure you join that community. We have a link on our website. If you wanna follow me on social media, I'm at Dirt Lifestyle Nate. We'll see you next time.